Hi, this is Sean McGowan for Acoustic Guitar, and welcome to this weekly workout. In this weekly workout, we're going to be taking a look at ninths, ninth arpeggios, ninth chord voicings, as well as some great picking exercises to really warm up your picking hand. So let's dive in and get started. In week one, we're going to be taking a look at some basic ninth chord voicings. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to specifically be taking a look at major ninths, dominant ninths and minor ninth chords as those are the three most common chord types you'll encounter in songs. And I split these chords for each of the chord qualities, major seven, minor seven, and uh, dominant seven all with ninths. I've split them into three different areas of the neck. And in the first example you see these labeled low nine in quotes, mid nine, and high nine. And that simply is my own interpretation of where the ninth is. You have kind of a low uh, voicing with a ninth in a lower octave, a middle voicing with a root on the fifth string, and then finally the high nine features the ninth at the very top of the chord voicing happening on the high E string. So let's take a look at these examples. The very first example is a G major nine. These are all movable shapes so you can use it anywhere on the root on the sixth string. So when I say root six for example that means that the root is placed on the low sixth string. <laughs> So G major 9 would then be this. And that's what I'm calling the low 9 because it's a lower chord voicing, but you still have the, the essential chord tones of 1, 3, 7, and 9. So it's a major 7th chord with a 9th on top. And again, if you want to play a A major 9, just move it up to an A. B flat, C, Etc. Then in the second measure, uh, we have a C major 9 uh, in the tablature, in the notation, and that's uh, with the quotes mid 9. So this would be a ninth chord voicing on roots 5. It actually looks just like the first voicing, the low 9, in terms of the structure of the voicing. Low to high, we have 1, 3, 7, 9. And then finally we go back to a root six voicing, but this one's called the high nine because the ninth is placed on top. So the third measure is. You can play that with the thumb over the fretboard if you're, um, if you're used to that technique or you can just use your fingers. So in the next measure we have the low, mid, and high nine respectively for minor ninth voicing. So let's play through those. The first one is G minor nine, low. Middle 9, C minor 9, and then finally the high 9, G minor 9. And then the same three registers, but with dominant 9th chords. So the first chord of G9 is C9, which would be the middle 9, and finally the high 9, G9. So once you get a handle on those voicings, and play through all of, you know the different keys and, and just you know maybe practice those chromatically or maybe through the circle of fifths or something just to get uh, them accustomed to your ears as well as your hands then we can start incorporating exercises I find these voicings sound really nice with hybrid exercises so let's take a look at the next example what we're going to be doing is taking major ninth voicings, starting with a low and working up to mid, and then high and then back down, and using a hybrid technique. So a hybrid picking technique means that we're going to use the pick, the flat pick, for the lowest note in the voicing, followed by the fingers, which in this case, since you're holding the pick with your index finger, it would be the middle, ring, and pinky. So the first example is this. And what you want to try to do in that example is have the chord already in place with your fretting hand. So just have that G major 9, C major 9, and then G major 9 again. And now what you're doing is working the picking hand by alternating between the pick and the fingers. And notice with the high nine voicing, now you need to use your pinky on your picking hand to articulate the note, which is the ninth, on the high E string. 
All right, there are a lot of other exercises that we can do that utilize uh, hybrid picking as well as cross picking. So in this next example, we're gonna cycle through the low, mid, and high ninths for minor ninth chord voicings, G minor nine and C minor nine. And we're just going to break those up, almost like little broken arpeggios. And there are a lot of different ways that you can practice this. Um, the three that come to mind would be hybrid picking, which I'll demonstrate. Uh, alternate picking or cross picking using alternate picking and it makes a great finger style exercise as well. So let's take a look at this next example. As with the last example you want to have those chords in place with your fretting hand so we're going to move from the G minor 9, C minor 9 to the high G minor 9. So with hybrid picking now what we're going to do is alternate between the flat pick and the middle finger. So let's take a look at that. Or you can cross pick that same example with the flat pick. So now what I'm going to be doing is alternate picking. Even though we're crossing four strings, we're going to go down, up, down, up, and so forth. So here's that example using alternate cross picking. Okay, let's take that same example and now use, uh, use it as a finger style example. So uh, there are different ways of fingering this with your picking hand, but what I suggest is maybe just resting your thumb on the low string and then just having it sort of a P-I-M-A exercise. So with this particular permutation, it would be P-M-I-A and continue to use that pattern P-M-I-A while moving across the strings. Here we go. Okay, for week two, we're going to be playing the ninth as part of an arpeggio. And these arpeggios featuring the ninth are just great, uh, awesome workouts for your right hand, for your picking hand. They incorporate alternate picking, cross picking, and uh, lots of really cool rhythmic patterns emerge. So let's take a look at the first example. What we're going to do is just see what the major ninth arpeggio looks like on the fretboard. So in the first example, what we have is just a major seventh arpeggio with a ninth at the end. So we have low to high, one, three, five, major seven, nine. And just as with the chord voicings in last week, these are all movable. So this happens to be a G major nine. But if you want to play an A major nine, just move up two frets, and so on. So in the first three measures of this example, we have major ninth fingerings, minor ninth fingerings and dominant ninth fingerings. So let's play through each one. Here's a major ninth. Here's a G minor ninth. And finally, here's a G dominant ninth. So these three chord arpeggio fingers, fingerings that we just played through would be the equivalent of the high nine that we explored last week with the chord voicings. And that is, the ninth is placed on the high E string, and these are could also be considered root four arpeggios because they all start with the root on the fourth string, the D string. So let's take a look now at the mid nine voicings using these arpeggios. So in the next example, we're going to run through C major ninth arpeggios, followed by C minor ninth and then C dominant ninth. So let's play through these together. Let's play them with a triplet rhythm. So here we go. Here's the C major ninth. One and a two and a. Here's a minor ninth. One and a two and a. And then finally, C dominant ninth. One and a two and a. So
So you'll notice what was different about this exercise is we're just returning to the root. After we go up through the arpeggio, we're literally just going one, three, five, seven, nine, and then returning to the root. Uh, and that just allows us to play triplets. So you can add other notes in there to, to get different rhythms if you want. Now in the next example, let's take a look at the low nine voicings for these arpeggios. So we're gonna start with root six, and we're back to G major nine. And then we'll go through G minor nine and G dominant nine. So these will be exactly like the middle nine arpeggios that we just explored, now starting on the root six. So here we go, here's a G major nine. One and a two and a. G minor nine, one and a two and a. And finally G dominant nine, one and a two and a. One thing I think that you'll find with these root six arpeggio fingerings is that the major ninth and dominant ninth shapes fall really easily under the fingers. But minor nine is a little more difficult. So you may want to explore using the fingering that's notated here, which you know forces you to kind of quickly do a position shift back to two. Or the other thing that you could do is actually fret that B flat on the A string instead of the low E string. So now you would be playing the G with your middle finger. It's a little bit more of a stretch, but if that's comfortable uh, for you to do, that may be easier to articulate than doing the position shift. So check out both fingerings and see which one you prefer. Okay, in this next example, now what we're gonna do is combine the low nine and the high nine arpeggio fingerings so that we have this really nice two octave uh, arpeggio fingering that you can use both as a great exercise for both hands as well as a basis for creating lines when you're improvising solos. So let's take a look at this example. We're gonna be going across all of the strings using a G major ninth. One and two and three and four and... Of course, you can play along with the metronome, play it slowly at first, gradually increase the tempo, so it's always clean and clear and with good tone. But what's really great about this is that you're, you're kind of moving up and across all of the strings. And um, the chord tone breakdown would be one, three, five, seven, nine, and then back down to one, three, five, seven, nine in the next uh, higher octave. So one more time, G major nine would be three and four and... <laughs> The next example outlines a G dominant nine arpeggio mixing the low and the high nine. And this time we're gonna use some triplets uh, for the exercise. So here we go, G nine. One and a two and a three and a four and a. All right, in week three, we're going to be mixing scales with these uh, ninth arpeggio figures. And these are great exercises because you get the, the workout, you know, the benefit of cross picking as well as just traditional alternate picking with this uh, scale. But since you don't just play scales all the time with music, hopefully, um, your, your picking hand uh, gets to learn the difference between picking a scalar pattern and then all of a sudden jumping into an arpeggio based pattern. So let's take a look at uh, the first example this is in G major, so what we're gonna do is start off by playing our mixed arpeggio fingering of the low and the high nine together, and we're gonna ascend, and then we're going to descend coming down the G major scale. And then we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna go up the scale and then come down with this ninth arpeggio. So what we're gonna do here is just use the major ninth arpeggio in tandem with a major scale. But you can do this with any arpeggio type and any mode. So if you're really into practicing your modes, just think about what the accompanying ninth chord might be and then put that mode together with its respective ninth chord. But now let's take a look at G major. Here we go, we'll start with a ninth chord arpeggio and come down with a scale and then go up the scale and come down the arpeggio. One and two and three and a four and a. All right, 
let's slow that down a little bit. Play it one more time, a little slower. One and two and three e and a four e and a. Okay, in the next example, we can do the same thing with our root 5 uh, arpeggio fingering. Now, we can expand this a little bit to be almost two octaves. We can't quite grab the ninth while staying in position, but this will still give you a great workout. So let's take a look at it and play through it slowly. We're going to do the same thing that we did with a G major, but we're going to start with a, a root 5 C, and we're going, to, we're going to go through the arpeggio at first, come down the scale, then go up the scale and come down the arpeggio. So let's check it out. Nice and slow. One and two and three E and a four E and a. Okay, another thing that you can do is mix all of these techniques and now we're going to start moving away from picking exercises and moving into ideas that you can use in your soloing. So this next example uh, outlines a G major ninth chord and if we just quickly take a look at the music here what's happening is we're outlining uh, the chord tones of a major ninth chord but spread across the strings so we have this nice uh, string skipping example of playing the first four notes <laughs> And that basically is outlining the G major ninth chord. And then we're going to follow that with a scalar example. And then we'll finish that out with uh, a little fragment from uh, the low ninth arpeggio figure. And then finish that off with some hybrid picking um, using the ninth examples that we looked at in week one. So let's check out this particular example that mixes all of them. One and two and three e and a four and... This next example takes the same ideas and applies them to a G minor 9 sound. So taking a quick look, we're going to do this nice uh, wide intervallic uh, line that opens this lick up. And um, it, you've got some nice string skipping, followed by arpeggios, and then scale fragments in the second measure of this example. And then just to vary things up a little bit, we're adding some 16th notes and some triplet figures for the pattern. So let's check this out. Here's the G minor 9 example. One and two, and three, and four, and... We'll play that same example up to tempo a little bit. One, and two, and three, and four, and... Okay, we've made it to week four, and in this example, we're going to be looking at a basic 12-bar blues in the key of G, and we're going to apply lines that are based on these arpeggio figures, uh, the ninth color, and all of these different uh, exercises that we've been exploring for the past three weeks. So let's take a look at this solo. One, a two, a one, two, here we go. <laughs> Okay, let's take it to the next level. What you can do is take all of these concepts and apply them to a variety of chord types. 
uh, in this sidebar, you see five different chords listed here, but I encourage you uh, to think of all of the different chords you can and uh, add the ninths to those seventh chord arpeggios. And by the way, you can also include altered ninths, meaning a dominant seven with a flat nine, dominant seven with a sharp nine, and so on. Let's take a look at these examples. So what we're doing is taking the concepts of uh, mixing the low nine and the high nine arpeggio figures, putting them together to outline these chords. So this first chord is the G9 sus4. Here we go. Three and four and. G diminished seventh with a ninth on top. Three and four and. G minor major nine, so this would be a G minor major seventh arpeggio with a natural nine on top. Three and four and. G six nine, which would be a G major six with a natural nine. Three and four and. And finally, G minor 6, 9, which would be a G minor 6, 1 flat 3, 5, and 6 with a natural 9. Here we go. 3 and 4 and. So you can see and hear the pattern's the same. Uh, even though the chord tones change, we're just going right through the numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 1, or 1, 3, 5, 6. 9-1.